Dharma protectors are special beings who clear our obstacles for our Dharma practice. Historically, several Dharma protectors were brought from the great monasteries of Bodhgaya and Nalanda in India to Tibet to protect Buddha's sacred teachings from being lost or becoming corrupted. There are both enlightened and unenlightened Dharma protectors and different protectors will arise at different times to fulfill different purposes. Dharma protectors help provide for us on both a spiritual and worldly level. On a spiritual level, they clear obstacles for our Dharma study and practice, helping us to gain attainments and wisdom to guide our own lives. On a worldly level, they remove problems and provide the resources we need to practice Dharma smoothly. For example, if we had enough money and if our family life was harmonious and stable, we could practice Dharma more easily. Enlightened protectors will not help us to go deeper into samsara. Dorje Shogden is an enlightened Dharma protector of this time, arising specially to guard the precious teachings of the Dharma and to protect Dharma practitioners of this day and age. Dorje Shogden is an emanation of Manjushri, the Buddha of Wisdom, who manifests at this time to pave the way for the immense beneficial growth of Dharma in the world. Although Dorje Shugden manifested around 350 years ago, this great being comes from a long lineage of great masters. The line of his illustrious incarnations can be traced all the way back to the time of the historical sage, Buddha Shakyamuni, when Manjushri emanated as a student of Shakyamuni. Buddhas often emanate into various forms in this way for specific purposes and to accommodate the needs of beings at that time and place. The earliest recorded lineage master of Dorje Shukdin's incarnation lineage was one of the legendary 84 Mahasiddhas of India. The Mahasiddha Birwapa, an emanation of Manjushri, who lived in the 9th century, was especially famed for his erudite teachings and ability to manifest many miracles. The next key incarnation of this lineage was Lord Dulzin Drakpa Geltsen, one of Lama Tsongkhapa's eight closest disciples. Lord Dulzin was famed throughout the land for his pure morality, for upholding his Buddhist vows. His very name Dulzin meant Vinaya, vow holder. He was also known for overseeing the full construction of Ganden Monastery. This would become the first and most prominent monastic institution of the Galukpa lineage which was established by Lama Tsongkhapa. One day, as Lama Tsongkhapa was giving teachings to a large assembly of monks, a white dove appeared and circled above continuously disturbing the teaching. Lord Dulzin recognized the dove as the Dharma protector Nechung, but did not say anything during Tsongkhapa's discourse. After the teachings, when Lama Tsongkhapa and all the students had left the hall, Lord Dulzin remained behind, alone, and addressed the dove. Nei Chung, why are you disturbing my Lama's teachings? He asked sternly. What do you want? The dove then transformed into a small boy, dressed all in white, who walked up to Lord Dulzin and said, I need your help. Lama Tsongkhapa has taught Nagarjuna's middle view perfectly. An uncommon protector needs to arise to protect these perfect teachings. I cannot do this as I have already promised Guru Rinpoche that I will protect Buddhism in general. Dulzin, can you arise as a protector, uncommon to the Ganden lineage, to protect Nagarjuna's middle view as taught so clearly by Tsongkhapa? Will you promise to do this? Dulzin nodded as he said, Yes, I will do it, I promise. The small boy said to Lord Dulzin, Do not forget your promise. Then he disappeared. In his next life, Dulzin manifested as the legendary scholar Panchen Sonam Drakpa, renowned for his profound knowledge and powerful eloquence in debate. He became the first and only person in history to be abbot of all three great Gelug monasteries, Ganden, Drepung and Sera. He also ascended the illustrious throne as the 15th Ganden Tripa, a highly respected position that represents Lama Tsongkhapa on earth.
Panchem Sonam Drakpa was extremely erudite, scholarly, and sharp in his wisdom. He was particularly famed for writing 11 definitive volumes of philosophical teachings that are still being studied in Ganden Shatse and Drepung Losaling today. As the central syllabus for becoming a Geshi, the equivalent of a PhD in Buddhist studies. These 11 volumes are also studied in other major monasteries as comparative studies. After Panchem Sonam Drakma passed into clear light, he returned in his next incarnation as a boy, Tulku Drakpa Geltsen, who showed miraculous signs from a young age. At his birth, rainbows appeared and the earth shook to rejoice at the appearance of this great being. From a young age, Tulkul Drakpa Geltsen could clearly remember his previous lives. He would naturally pick up and use ritual implements and was able to memorize any text given to him. By the age of nine, he was writing commentaries and giving teaching. By 18, he had meditated in hundreds of caves in Tibet, where his students reported that he saw Buddhas directly. He had to keep moving from cave to cave because the fame of his great attainments spread like wildfire. People came from everywhere to make offerings to him and seek his blessings. He moved because he wanted privacy and disliked fame. He only wished to be in retreat and meditate. After the fourth Dalai Lama passed away, two of the most prominent candidates for his incarnation were Tulkul Drakpa Gyaltsen and Ngawang Losang Gyatso. Eventually, Ngawang Losang Gyatso was selected as the fifth Dalai Lama, but from a very young age, Tulkul Drakpa Gyaltsen demonstrated such great attainments that he was often compared to the Dalai Lama himself. They both stayed in Drepung Ngapa, under the tutelage of the fourth Panchen Lama, Losan Cherki Gyaltsen. Drepung was also the center of the Tibetan government at the time, called Ganden Podrang. While Tulkul Drakpa Gyaltsen did not become the fifth Dalai Lama, he was widely respected and continuously sought after. Streams of people would come from far and wide just to pay their respects. Tibetan nobility, Chinese and Mongolian royalty often traveled huge distances to request blessings and teachings from him. As Tulkul Drakpa Gyaltsen lived within the same monastery as the fifth Dalai Lama, students of the Dalai Lama saw the increasing numbers of students' attention and sponsorship that Tulkul Drakpa Gyaltsen received. The great fifth Dalai Lama was unaffected by this, but his attendants thought that it was not right that Tulkul Drakpa Gyaltsen was more popular than the fifth Dalai Lama and became very jealous. One day, Tulkul Drakpa Gyaltsen had an audience with the protector, Nechung, who spoke to him through an oracle. An oracle is a specially trained person who can channel beings from a different realm such as Dharma protectors. The oracle asked him, Are you ready? Do you remember your promise? Tulkul Drakpa Gyaltsen was surprised and asked, Ready for what? I don't remember any promise. The oracle picked up some rice, blessed it, and gave it to Tulkul Drakpa Gyaltsen to eat. The oracle said, You made a promise that you would arise as an uncommon protector. Take this, and you will remember. Can you arise as a protector to protect Nagarjuna's middle view, as taught by Tsongkhapa? Will you promise to do this? Yes, I will do it, I promise. Tulkul Drakpa Gyaltsen ate the rice and remembered. He exclaimed, I remember now. He then said, but I have a problem. I don't have anger in my mind stream. How can I arise as a wrathful Dharma protector if I don't have anger? Nechung replied, I will help you. And so Nechung began to create the conditions for Tulkul Drakpa Gyaltsen to manifest and emerge as a supreme Dharma protector. He fanned intrigue and whispers of discontent among the disgruntled, jealous students of the fifth Dalai Lama. And the circumstances for the long foretold protector began to arise. You better do something. This is getting too much. Tulkul Drakpa Gyaltsen is stealing the limelight again. We can't let that happen. They eventually decided and justified that for the sake of the Buddha Dharma, they had to kill him. 
The attendants of the 5th Dalai Lama began to plot and plan ways to assassinate Tulkul Drakbar Gelsen, and various murder attempts were made. First, they tried to poison him, but to no avail. Tulkul Drakbar Gelsen was so highly attained that he had full control of the winds and energies of his body. The poison was simply expelled and he remained unaffected. They then plotted to seek audience with Tulkul Drakbar Gelsen under the guise of respectfully making offerings to him. As they approached him, they withdrew a knife that was hidden under the offerings and tried to stab him to death. Again, their attempts failed. Wherever they tried to stab him, eyes would spontaneously appear on his body and look back at them. No matter what they did, those who hated Tulkul Drakbar Gyaltsen just could not kill him. Out of compassion and realizing what needed to be done, Tulkul Drakbar Gyaltsen then told them, there's only one way you can kill me in this life. You will have to choke me with a cutter. And so they did. They killed Tulkul Drakbar Gyaltsen by stuffing a cutter down his throat. As he was suffocating, a slight amount of fierce energy resembling wrath arose in Tulkul Drakbar Gyaltsen as he passed into his next emanation. At Tulkul Drakbar Gyaltsen's funeral, many turned out to mourn the great master, representatives of the Chinese emperor, princess of Tibet, and high lamas of monasteries all came to pay their respects. Tulkul Drakbar Gyaltsen's body was placed on a huge funeral pyre that was specially prepared for this highly respected lama. Then his attendants tried to light the pyre. However, no matter what they did, the pyre refused to catch fire and would not burn. Amidst this turmoil, the great fifth Dalai Lama found out that Tulkul Drakbar Gyaltsen had been murdered by the Dalai Lama's own attendants. The Dalai Lama was instantly and deeply regretful, exclaiming, Oh, what did my people do? The Dalai Lama immediately composed a prayer in poetic form as an apology, which praised Tukul Dalkbar Gyaltsen's qualities and expressed his own great remorse for what his people had done. The prayer was brought down on a tray from the Dalai Lama's residence to the funeral pyre. When Tukul Drakbar Gyaltsen's main attendant read aloud the prayer composed by the fifth Dalai Lama, the fire caught a light on its own and the pyre started to burn. As the fire began to gain strength and the pyre broke into flames, Tulkul Drakbar Gyaltsen's main attendant slapped his robe on the pyre in frustration and exclaimed, What kind of High Lama are you? How can you let them kill you and not do anything? Suddenly, a thick gust of wind and smoke swirled out from the funeral pyre, arose into the sky and covered all of Lhasa in the shape of a large hand. As it swept through the sky, earthquakes shook the land, hail fell, cattle died, crops failed, and there was famine throughout the land. These were all signs of the cumulative negative karma of the people who had destroyed a holy being like Tulkul Drakbar Gyaltsen. The Dalai Lama sensed that it was a bad omen. We have wronged Tulkul Drakbar Gyaltsen, he said. He has died and become a raging evil spirit. There was no peace in Lhasa from that moment onwards. The Dalai Lama could not even drink a cup of tea in peace. The teacup would tremble every time he brought it to his lips. The Dalai Lama then decided to call upon the powerful Mint Rolling Lama, one of the highest Lamas in the land, who was most renowned for destroying evil forces in the Tibetan mountains. Mind Rolling Lama began a series of fire puja rituals known to be very powerful for exercising the most potent of spirits and sending them to celestial pure lands. By his powerful meditation, Mind Rolling Lama would place the spirit on a ladle, which would then be tipped into the fire, burned and exercised. But as he did so this time with this spirit, something strange kept happening. Each time, just as he dropped this spirit into the fire, Yamantaka, the most ferocious emanation of Manjushri, would arise out of the flames and come back onto the ladle. Another time, as Mindroling Lama was again focusing on the ladle, 
the Dharma protector Setra appeared as the mirage of a beautiful seductive female who distracted Mindrolling Lama by dancing in front of him. This made Mindrolling lose his concentration just for a moment, during which Dorje Shukden left the ladle and disappeared with Setra. After many rituals were conducted, and when the Lama still could not destroy Dorje Shukden, the Dalai Lama eventually realized that he was not an evil spirit after all. He proclaimed then, he has become a Dharma protector, and I will authorize it. The Dalai Lama wrote an official proclamation and a prayer, recognizing that Dorje Shukden was a direct emanation of Tulkul Drakba Gelson and an undisputed Dharma protector for these times. The praise to Dorje Shukden by His Holiness the Fifth Dalai Lama, whom, though unmoving from the sphere of primordial spontaneity, with wrathful turbulent power, swifter than lightning, endowed with heroic courage to judge good and bad, I invite you with faith, please come to this place. Robes of a monk crowned adorned with rhinoceros leather hat, Right hand holds ornate club, left holds a human heart. Riding various mounts such as Nagas and Garudas, who subdues the mammoths of the charnel grounds, praise to you. Samaya substances, offerings and torma, outer, inner and secret. Favorite visual offerings and various objects are arranged, although previously my wishes were a bit dense. Do not stop your powerful apparitions, I reveal and confess. Now respectfully praising with body, speech and mind. For us, the masters, disciples, benefactors and entourages, provide the good and avert the bad. Bring increase like the waxing moon in spiritual and temporal realms. Moreover, swiftly accomplishing all wishes, according to our prayers, Bestow the supreme effortlessly, and like the jewel that bestows all wishes, always protect us with the three jewel. From then on, the smoke in the form of a black hand lifted from the Lhasa skies, the dying of the cattle, the hail, the earthquake, and all terrible things ceased. Everything flourished once again. Then Dorje Shugden traveled to the Sakyas, the Sakya Patriarch, who were very powerful, recognized who he was, enthroned him and made a chapel in his honor. The practice of Dorje Shugden started there, where the Sakyas declared that Dorje Shugden would become the definitive Dharma protector from this time onwards and that his power will grow. They were instrumental in bringing his practice to thousands in both the monastic and lay communities. Dorje Shugden thus became a Sakya protector and remained with them for 300 years. Praised by the Sakya master Kunkien Ngawang Kungo Lodro, here are just some drops out of the ocean of praises, rising from deep esteem and devotion to the protector Dorje Shugden. Listen carefully to the words which honor his profound and universal compassion and his benevolent activities of protecting the Dharma. Praise of the Protector, Dorje Shugden, composed by the great Sakyapa Master, Kunkien Ngawang Kunga Lodro. At the early time, entering into the teachings of the Tathagata, you rose in the form of Vinaya holding Bhikshu. Thus you protect all the teachings of the Sravaka Pitaka. Without exception, I prostrate to you. In the middle, in front of many Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, having generated the aspiring and entering Bodhicitta, you obtain the prophecy as a protector of the teaching of the Dharma. Thus you protect all the teachings of the Bodhisattvas, without exception, to you I prostrate. In the great mandala of the ocean of Tantras, initiated by Vajradhara and receiving the Samayas, Thus you protect all the teachings of the profound Tantra, without exception, to you I prostrate. In particular, in this northern land, surrounded by a range of snow mountains, though not directly pervaded by the son of the Buddha, yet sustained by his compassion, 
You are the protector of all those perfect schools of Dharma. I prostrate to you. All the great holders of the teaching, who comment according to one's own views, the entire Tripitakas, the Tantras and their commentaries. You are the very protector of all the holders of the Dharma. Acting as the fulfiller of the words of those leaders, I prostrate to you. The legacy of the Pandits, translators, Dharma kings and ministers, all the temples constructed by them. You are the protector of all those seats of the Sangha. Without exception, I prostrate to you. For entire Tibet, included in upper region Ngari, central region Yusang, and lower region Dokam, you act as the very protector, refuge, supporter, and friend of all people without exception. Thus you are the very god of the snowland country, I prostrate to you. The great protector of all the Buddhas of this fortunate aeon, who is the eliminator of all the forces of unsuitable Mara, some day through showing full enlightenment as Samyaksam Buddha, you will fulfill the deed of a Tathagata. To you I prostrate. In short, in all three times, uninterruptedly, with your infinite secrets of body, speech and mind, all those beings who are wandering in the ocean of the cycle, you give them the perfect state of liberation. To you I prostrate. Thus by the power of venerating you with this ocean of melodious praise, through generating delight, compassion and benevolent force of your mind, please fulfill the activity for increasing of virtues, pacifying of disfavorable interferences and accomplishment of all the purposes in accordance to Dharma. Several hundred years later, there appeared a great Galukpa Lama, Tagpu Pema Vajra, who was known for his powerful ability to travel to many celestial places. Once during his meditation, Tagpu Pema Vajra went to Ganden Heaven, the pure paradise of the future Buddha, Maitreya. There the great Maitreya was seen to be sitting in the center, surrounded by an assembly of high lamas and Lama Tsongkhapa's eight main disciples, one of whom was Dulzin Drakpa Geltsin. Tagpu Pemavadra folded his hands and humbly appealed to Dulzin Drakpa Geltsin to expound on the mystical tantra, mandala teachings and lineage of Dorje Shugden. From Dulzin Drakpa Geltsin's heart, rainbow lights shone forth to Tsongkhapa's heart, then lights emanated back from Tsongkhapa to Dulzin Drakpa Geltsin's heart. From there, lights radiated out from him to a place under Tsongkhapa's throne. Suddenly and spontaneously, in front of the entire assembly, the mandala of Dorje Shugden blazed forth from under Tsongkhapa's throne. Tagpu Pemavajra then received the teachings and oral transmission of this sacred protector practice directly from Dorje Shugden himself. After this, the whole mandala dissolved back under the throne. Tagpu Pemavadra came back from his meditation and immediately composed the lineage prayer and practice, which he had received from Dorje Shugden. He passed this down to his closest disciple, the renowned Pabonka Rinpoche. Pabonka Rinpoche was one of the greatest Buddhist masters of the 20th century and among the most influential teachers in Tibet. He was recognized by the eminent Shapa Rinpoche, Choje Lo Sangdagi, who advised that he should go to Sera Me Monastery to pursue his studies. Although he had a mediocre academic career at that monastery and was often ridiculed for being dull, everything changed when he met his root guru, Tagpu Pemavajra. For 10 years, Pabonka studied the Lamrin under Tagpu Pemavajra and by his pure guru devotion and consistent effort, he became an erudite scholar. Pabonka Rinpoche was an extraordinary practitioner and teacher, known especially for his mastery of the Haruka Bodhi Mandala and the Vajra Yogini practice. There is even a famous story of Haruka appearing to Pabonka Rinpoche when he visited Chimburi in Tibet. When he first went to Chimburi, an image of Haruka spoke to him, and as he opened his mouth, a tremendous amount of nectar flowed forth. In front of over 60 people, Pabonka collected this nectar from Haruka's mouth 
and this was then made into healing nectar pill. In this very same cave in Chimburi, Hiruka also promised Babonka Rinpoche the following. From now on, for the next seven generations, I will protect and help anyone who practices my teachings. Thousands of people then received the Haruka Bodhi Mandala and every teaching on it directly from Pabonka. This is why Pabonka is still, to this day, considered to be a living emanation of Haruka. As he was very popular with thousands of students from all over Tibet, the 13th Dalai Lama observed him and his teachings very closely but could find no fault with Pabonka. At the time, Pabonka was teaching the Lamrin according to the little-known Southern tradition and many scholars debated the source of these teachings. The 13th Dalai Lama thus decided to question him on this. Pabonka Rinpoche dictated a letter to the 13th Dalai Lama to explain with detailed references to books in the Dalai Lama's private room. When the Dalai Lama checked these books and references in his library, the details were exact and accurate. This open show of clairvoyance immediately silenced the 13th Dalai Lama and quelled his doubts. Pabonka Rinpoche was so respected that he was invited to both Nyingma and Gelukpa monasteries throughout Tibet, where he gave teachings according to the varying levels and state of their minds. While he was a very sound Gelukpa Lama, he was also able to teach students of other traditions perfectly. One of Pabonka's Rinpoche's greatest achievements is the famous Lamrin discourse given to thousands of disciples, including eminent Lamas of the day, such as His Holiness Trijang Rinpoche and His Holiness Ling Rinpoche. Among his many distinguished deeds and teaching, Pabonka Rinpoche also composed Dorje Shukden's Sacred Kangsol, melodious drum victorious in all directions, based on the vision of his guru, Tagpu Pemavadra. Pabonka Rinpoche taught everyone in Tibet that Dorje Shukden would become the new protector of the Galukpas for years to come, and throughout his life he gave many teachings and practices of this powerful protector to countless people. We must bring him to the world now and worship him, he advised. In 1949, when Tibet was experiencing unrest, Pabonka Rinpoche knew he could not leave Tibet and foresaw that the teachings may be lost. He decided to pass the entire lineage of Dorje Shugden, along with many other precious teachings, to his most devoted and illustrious student, Kyabje Trijang Rinpoche. His Holiness Kyabje Trijang Rinpoche brought this teaching from Tibet to India when a large number of monks left to re-establish the teachings there. Trijang Rinpoche arose to become one of the most eminent Buddhist masters of our time and was also renowned for being the junior tutor and spiritual guide to His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama. To preserve the lineage and teaching, Trijang Rinpoche wrote the extensive commentary Music Delighting, An Ocean of Protectors which has become the definitive source of Dorje Shugden's practice today. It is because of his kindness and direct teaching that thousands of people continue to have the great fortune of receiving Dorje Shugden's initiation and practice throughout the world, even to this day. Read the entire commentary at dorjeshugden.com and begin this practice to receive the innumerable benefits of this most powerful protector whose time has come.